Welcome to His Home Academy, podcast number one. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. And to start off this podcast about how to homeschool in the name, in the fear, in the love of the Lord God, I'll be introducing my mother, Lucia Fulmer. My father had the chance to be the first interview for and first host for His House of Learning podcast. But now we will be going to the boots on the ground, the woman who made my homeschool instruction possible day by day. How are you doing today, Mother? Fine, thank you. How are you? Oh, doing excellent, actually. <laughs> looking, looking forward to a sh to sharing a. It's been it's been a, it's been a while. I'm actually. I wish I'd done this sooner, but I'm glad that it was done during uh, this you know this time for for like for people to be you know just edified by you know, what you've done in my life. And what you can, and what you'll be able to pass on to uh, future, future, like future generations of of uh, homeschooling families. So, let's just begin of uh, with who you are before you started homeschooling my sister and you know, and me. Okay, so I'm going to share a little bit of my background first. Um, I was born in 1963 in Los Angeles, California. My father was born in Fresnillo, Zacatecas, Mexico, and my mother born in uh, Miami, Arizona, so I am Mexican-American. I grew up in East Los Angeles, attended um, elementary and intermediate school, and then graduated from Sure High School in Montebello, California, and then graduated from East Los Angeles College with my AA and early childhood development. My plan was to further my education by attending Cal State LA. But at the time, I didn't have finances, and I didn't want to ask my parents for money. So I decided to um, to find a, to look for a full-time job so that I could save up money and then uh, perhaps later on um, be able to afford the tuition for K Cal State LA. Um, I started filling out application and taking the tests that were required, and. Um, Thankfully, I was able to um, get a job at the post office in Pasadena. There, um, I worked there for 11 years. Um, I, I got hired in 1983, and um, and there, uh, three years later, in 1986, I met my husband, Lance Fulmer, and um, we dated for three years. And within those three years, um, my husband shared, or my fi my fiance at the time, um, he would share the gospel with me. He was a Christian, and of course I was a non Christian. And um, he shared he shared the gospel with me several times or many times, and and I was receptive to um, to his words because um, they were the word of God, and I believed in God at the time. I I was Catholic, and I was excited that he was excited about talking about God, so I would listen to him. And in 1989, uh, we we got married, got married in the Catholic Church. Um, my husband continued to share the gospel with me even after we got married. And um, and one day I I told my husband that um, I did not want to to hear anymore about the God about the Bible, that um, I was Catholic and that um, I was always gonna be a Catholic. And so he asked me to do him a favor. He said, he said to me, um, I want you to do me a favor. He said, um, I want you to, when you're alone at night, he said, I want you to read the book of John. And he says, this is the, this is the last thing I'm gonna ask of you, he says. And after this, he says, I will not bother you anymore. And so um, I said, okay. At that time, he was working, um, I believe it was graveyard, and I was working swing shift, so I was there alone at night. And so I was able to have my, my alone time, and I was able to um, read the Bible. And my son, Christian, he was, I believe he was like one years old at the time. He was still in his crib. Um, the first night, I read the Bible, and I only read one chapter of the book of John and the second night I read the second chapter and on the third night um, I read the third chapter John chapter 3 and I got to where it said where Nicodemus 
um, goes at night to talk to Jesus. And Jesus tells him that he must be born again. And when I read those words, born again, what does that mean? Well, I did not understand. Although Jesus, Jesus goes on to explain, you know, what, what he means by born again, that we must be born of the spirit, that we, when we are born from our parent, from our mothers, that we are born of the flesh. So now we are to be born of the spirit. And, and at that moment, I understood what Jesus was talking about. And, and something beautiful happened that night in that room to where I remember just almost taking a deep breath and feeling feeling just so refreshed and so new and so excited and 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 I knew that that the God that, that my husband was sharing with me was a real God and that I and that I needed him and, and that he loved me. And um and from then on the next day I didn't I didn't tell my husband anything about this. Um, and I told my husband the next day that I wanted to go to church and he says, huh? And he didn't ask me anything. He, he, I, I told him, I wanted him, I wanted to go to a church that, um, he had, um, during the time that he was sharing the gospel with me, I was working at the post office and at 10 in the morning, there was a Bible study. And I would I was able to listen to it at work on my headphones at work and it was Raul Reese and he he was a pastor at Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar at the time. And I told my husband, Can we go to his church? And my husband says, Well no, he says his church is too far away. I said, Well, I want to go to a Bible teaching church. I want I need to I need to hear the word of God. And and so we did some research and come to find out that Raul Reese has a brother that um, has a church in Pasadena, um, Pastor Xavier Reese, so, which was like 10 minutes from our house, so that was a blessing. So we ended, we ended up going to uh, Harvey Chapel, Pasadena. And there I, I came, I went down on, um, after the service, the pastor made an all altar call and I went down and gave my life to the Lord, although I believe I was already saved that night in, in my bedroom. Um, so that's how I got saved. That's, so, oh, that's fine. It's, it's it's all it's all right. That's the thing because because now because now we can transition to transition to like oh so so now you have this coming of faith. You're both equally uh, equally yoked. So when and how did you decide to homeschool for your uh, children? Okay, the, the homeschooling, um, I was still working at the post office and my son was, my son Christian uh, was about four and a half years old at the time. And my husband came up to me and he asked, he said to me um, that he wanted me to homeschool our children. At the time we have, I had a daughter, I'll have a daughter also who is a Christian and Keisha. Her name is Keisha and Christian and Keisha are like a year and a half apart. And he wanted he wanted me to homeschool our children, and he wanted me to start when Christian turned five. Um, at the time, I was not aligned with that decision. I did not want to homeschool. To be honest, at the time, I didn't feel I was capable. I didn't think that I um, had the ability. It was a huge responsibility, and I didn't think that I could do this. And so I told him that, no, um, I don't, I can't do this. And he encouraged me and he said, but Lucy, he says, you have, you have the background, you have your AA and early childhood development. And I told him, but I don't have my, my BA and I don't have credentials and, you know, I, I don't qualify. He says, you don't need all that. He says, you can do this. He says, you have to trust in God. But yet, yet I continued to think that I did not have the ability to do it. And not only that, I I told my husband, why would I quit my job? You know, I have a good job. And at that time, my job to me was my identity. 
who would I be without my job? I mean, I, I worked post office. Every time I talked to people about, you know, they asked me where, where you work at for the post office, people would be all in awe and, you know, and, and so now, what, you know, what are you gonna do now, you know, without a job at the post office? So in my mind, my job was my identity and, and I couldn't quit. So I continued to go to work. As time went by, um, Christian was getting older and I, I continued to, to say no to my husband. And, and one day we had an argument before I went to work and I said to him, you know, I remember, I remember I telling him that, no, I'm not gonna do this. And I remember walking into work thinking to myself, well, I don't need to quit. I'm healthy, I'm strong, you know, so I don't need to quit my job. And I remember continuing going to work and about a month later, I remember going to work that night and um, I was reaching up to get a, a tray of mail up high on the, on the shelf. And I remember feeling a twinge on my back and, and after that I had this horrible pain and every day got worse. And at that moment I knew I knew that that because of my disobedience and this is I really I really believe this that because of my disobedience and it, because it was God's will for me to homeschool my children the Lord you know I always say this he he put me out you know it's okay really he said so so um but yet I continued in my stubbornness I continued to go to go to work and my husband kept telling me Lucy he says it's almost time for you to quit you have to you have to quit the homeschool Christian and I continued and, and telling him, no, I can't quit because if I quit, then I'm gonna lose the house. And he says, what does it matter? He says, we're fine. He says, he says, but look at you. He says, you're, you're, you're on your knees at home. He said, you're not even walking on your legs. He says, you're gonna end up in a wheelchair. And I continued going to work and, and they sent me to therapy and, the, and they wanted to give, they wanted, the doctors wanted to give me cortisone shots and it, I fell into a depression. It was just a constant battle. And then one day I got home from work and I was so beat, my body was broken. And I remember getting out of the car and barely making it into the house and walking into the kitchen and just leaning over the counter. And I remember saying to myself, I don't know how long I can do this for. And then, and then I heard a voice, and I heard a voice, and as he said, be still. And I looked up, and there was no one there, but I knew, and I responded, yes, Lord, and I knew it was the Lord. And, and I remember just crying and crying that, that day in the kitchen and, and leaning over the counter, and, and the next day I went to work, and I turned in my resignation, my keys, my badge card. And I just walked out. I never looked back, and and then on, I knew what I needed to, to do. I needed to be obedient to my husband, and I knew it was God's will to homeschool our children. So that's, and before we get into the more details on how you personally homeschooled us, a lot, a lot of people will come up with the assumption that they have to do it alone but for us we actually we, we actually did it in cooperation and collaboration with a number of other families so 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 who did our family homeschool with over the over the, the years you know as far as associations and whatnot go okay so um i had to do a little bit of homework because i didn't really remember the first umbrella that we were under but after talking to my husband, he said, um, we began homeschooling in Pasadena, California under a Sunland umbrella, the Sunland, Sunland umbrella. And then we continued under the, the Dakias Christian Academy at San, San Bernardino, California. So, so just a quick question. What do you mean by a uh, umbrella? Um, an umbrella is almost like, like a, you would say it's a school, but they meet in the physical building and it, it's, the, it's a group of parents, all the parents that homeschool. And um, we all get together there for meetings or sometimes they have book sales. Um, 
or whatever needs you might have and that that's and and those the people in charge there they're pretty much you're under them and so the way it works is that they take care of all the paperwork for instance if i if they have all the information about the children and everything that i'm doing as far as curriculum and i have to turn in report cards to them and if i want to have the kids tested then i they they set everything up so i can have the kids tested so um it's a great support so i highly recommend it you said you said you were under two uh sunland in pasadena and then uh, the caius christian academy when we moved over to san Bernardino county uh yes yeah and we were and we were with them uh with them for uh and it's, well and that's the thing did you start did you start from the very be, you know beginning or was it some months or years after you started homeschooling that you got under these umbrellas i believe um i believe it was right from the gate I, I believe you have to be under an umbrella or something for for in order for you to be successful you need the support because you need to know what to do and how to do it and those people are there to help you you know they support you encourage you and, and help you along the way and 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 i would definitely agree because i because i because i remember doing all kinds of activities and field trips and whatnot mm -hmm. in fact we even did we even did a sports yeah with them I as well sports. yeah sports with them as well i mean it's not as it, there's not as much variety as you would at a regular school but then i would say i mean I mean, I enjoyed it when, when anything that we did with, you know, did with them. I remember my first sport was bowling. And then the last one I played was a track and field. Mm -hmm. Track and field. And yeah, so, so the camaraderie is there. I mean, there was a, there was a WANA club. We did, we did field trips to like muse, mu, uh, museums. I remember the, the San Diego Zoo. Yeah. And there's also uh, all kinds of. I mean, we uh, for for a time we we visited was it like a farm or a ranch? Yeah. And we, yeah, there's all kinds of ac activities there. You know, like pet you know pet shows and present you know presentations and yeah, it was yeah. I'd say it's, and and re and really it, we didn't do things with them that often, but it was often enough. Yeah. And and that's so I would say hands down when people told I remember remember. Uh, or I started junior high, people, I remember some people would say, oh, well, I don't know why you're homeschooled because then you're going to lack socialization. And I'm, and of course, I'm thinking to myself, well, first off, I'm going to church you know, regularly and being a part of ministry and whatnot. So there's that. And secondly, and I've actually, I've, I've actually grown up and, you know, grown up and learned with like the same people, I guess, in like, this intimate group for years. Right, right. So, so you do develop relationships. Uh, I still, I still value them. In fact, I've actually, I've actually thought you know thought you know thought about it and prayed for some of you know some of my former classmates, if you will, you know, mm -hmm. from the from the previous years. I really hope and pray that they're doing well now. But, but let's get but let's get into uh more the more the brass tacks. So so oftentimes with people for one of the you know, aside from the whole social aspect, there's also the challenge or the seeming apparent challenge of age difference because like you said you, you know Keisha and I you know we're a year and a half apart so that's more than just one grade mm -hmm. so in regards to multiple children of different grades how did you homeschool you know you know, homeschool with this and generally and how did you you know from like pre-k until about middle school so just anything in particular that you did just to make the adjustment for both of us um when I started homeschooling Christian in kindergarten and Keisha was Keisha Christian was five and Keisha was three and a half so while we were homeschooling in in the kitchen uh, Keisha was also in the room also uh, with us so she was sitting there uh, paying attention and also she was involved in some of the activities that uh, were given to Christian um, also we spent a lot of time at the library at least every other week checking out like 20 or 25 books and we would go home and we would sit on the bed spread the books out on the bed and the kids would uh, choose a book and then i would read it out loud and while i read it i was i would pull
point to the words and Keisha would sit on my right and Christian would sit on my left. And during that time, what I noticed um, was with time, uh, as time went on, I, don't, I can't remember how much time had elapsed, but uh, one day Keisha said to me, Mom, um, I'm going to read to you. So I said, okay. And I thought she was just going to play, a play read. And no, she actually was reading the words to me and I was really blown away. So I said, oh my goodness, she, she had been memorizing the words. So as I was pointing at the words, she was looking at the words and she was memorizing the words. So when, when I was very excited about that. And after that, it kind of made me think, okay, when she gets into school, because when Christian went to first grade and she was in kinder, she already knew how to read already. So, and Christian was going to first grade, so he knew how to read already. So it kind of made me decide that it was a good idea or it was my, it was my, it had to be my, my, my decision as a mother. And so you have to really pray about it and ask the Lord, you know, what do I do here? And if you see that your child is able to handle what the older child is able to handle, then make this the decision to put them on the same grade in the same grade level. It makes sense. It, it'll be a challenge, a little bit more of a challenge for the younger one. But if you think she can handle it, then why not? You know, give it a shot. So that's what I did. We started out um, in the first grade. We started using School for Tomorrow. It was School for Tomorrow. Yeah, I, yeah, that was that, that 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 was one of the early ones. Yeah, one of the I early ones. School for Tomorrow, and I picked that curriculum because. I was still a little bit eerie about, you know, does this really work or does it not work? I was still on the fence about homeschooling. I wasn't 100% sure that this was going to work. I was still doubting my abilities. So I went with a very easy curriculum. This one here was read the sentence and fill in the blank. Pick the word from the word bank. So we, we use that curriculum. I can't remember how many years we use that curriculum, but then we think we moved over was, to Alpha Omega. Yeah, it was it was a couple of years. Yes. And then we moved over to Alpha Omega. We use that curriculum. And then one day the kids came up to me, both of them came up to me and said, Mom, can you can you give get us a more challenging curriculum? And I was like, Huh? And so I was really surprised about that. You know, who, what kid comes up to you and says, I need, I want more, more challenge, right? So, so I was very excited. Although it, it was, it was huge because I really didn't know which curriculum to choose. So then I went, I went to, um, the people un, under the umbrella that I was under during that time was Dakai's Christian Academy. Um, I spoke to some of the mothers there and I was telling them my situation and they recommended, um, Alpha Omega, did you say, or was it, or was it Becca? Becca. Yeah, Becca. Yes. That's right. It was, it was, it was Becca. a Becca. They recommended a Becca because a Becca was an advanced curriculum, and if your kids want more challenge, well, let's give them some challenge. So that I went with a uh, Becca, and then for math, I went with Saxon Math because I heard real, really good things about Saxon Math also. So we we tried it out, and the kids they loved it. The kids were excited. They liked it, and they excelled. And um, and I believe when I think they were in fifth grade, I can't remember. I, I had them tested. I think there was SAT nine. I had them tested because I was I was still wondering whether or not this whole homeschooling thing was really working, and if they were really learning anything. Although I was testing them, you know, giving them tests every Friday on on whatever they were learning in history, math, and science, and language arts, giving them tests, and they were doing very well. But yet I thought, okay, will they do well on a test? Not given by me. So I went ahead and um, again went to Dakai's Christian Academy and I and I signed up for the testing and the kids were tested there at the site. And when I got the results back, I was I was very excited. I was overwhelmed that the kids were um, they were excelling above their grade but their grade level. It was it was very exciting and and. Um, so, you know, and, and there was a part that I forgot to mention, you know, with all my doubt about homeschooling and, and my abilities and all, um, I actually had to, to ask, 
to um, ask the people at church. Some of the I was going to a Bible study, and some of the some of the ladies there, they were having a prayer night. So I had asked them to pray for me because I really wanted to be excited about homeschooling, not just just go okay eighty percent or just give them my eighty five percent. I wanted to be excited and give them my hundred percent, and I didn't think that I was. And I asked them to pray for me to to give me that excitement in my heart to 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 do my to give my one hundred percent. So for for about a month a month later, um, I I got up one morning to homeschool the children, and and it was a whole change in me. It was like this excitement, like come on, we got we got to get started. And I was so excited about it. It's like I was so gun ho. I couldn't believe it. And and from there on, I I started um, homeschooling them, homeschooling them with excitement, and and then looking for books for them to read, um, and looking for extra resources, and maybe perhaps maybe give them too much homework. Sometimes I would give them like three hours of homework. <laughs> Every once in a while, it, you know, it does a body good. But yeah, try not to exasperate your your children. Because at the time, I felt that that they were they had the ability to do it. They they need they my my son Christian and both of them, they liked the challenge. So I would try to find resources and and <laughs> extra books and and um, a matter of fact, they read the whole series of uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. There are seven books. I read them first. And then I would write um, questions where they had to answer them in complete sentences. So that was fun. And they actually enjoyed it. And they read they read lots of uh, stories about Christian people, too. Oh, yeah. Mich mission missionaries. Yeah, missionaries. Uh, yeah, a number of yeah, same missionaries, ministers, preachers, teachers. I mean, even even uh, even those who weren't, you know, who were in a, you know, quote, unquote, you know, uh, religious vocation yeah we it, a lot of church history but that, it, that was a that was a valuable you know asset you know to me so, so i think so it was so looking back could you have continued effectively into high school because because of because I ended up going to I ended up going into a private high school, and Keisha started eighth grade in you know in the same in the same school, of course, you know different part of the campus, and I and believe that and we believe that's because as far as we were concerned at the time that that there was there wasn't that was the that was the best option for us. So so looking back, could you have? Continue to affect, continue effectively into high school, and would have been much more, would, and would have been much easier with with today's current resources. Um, I would say that perhaps, most possibly, I could have. I really put continued to um, do my due diligence and and be prepared and look for resources that would continue to challenge my students or my children. I I believe I would be able to if, if, if I put God first and trust in him and and because it was a daily thing. It was a daily thing to trust in God. It was it was not my ability. That that is something that I learned um when I I saw the results on the SAT nines. The kids the kids <clears throat> the kids results were post high school. And so um Perhaps maybe maybe I could have homeschooled them because since they were post high school, um, that made me a little bit more nervous. Because what more could I give them? I was giving them so much already, and I would have to really dig deep to look for resources to continue to challenge them. So I believe that I could if I if I trusted in God and and um, he he would have got us through. That's just, because that's the thing uh, back in the because back in the day, cause even I think uh, with with the resources like looking back on it myself with the resources that were available, it was possible. It just would have definitely been less user friendly. But I definitely say to today, it's it's much. Not when I say easier, I mean because there's more to work with. It's just as far as finding it, 
and then using it, you know, you know, appropriately. I mean, there's there's a there's like online there's like online schools, courses, co-ops. There's you know, and there's even now even I mean, there's more there's just more products of you know products available. I mean, I, I mean, there's a number of curriculums now where you can actually directly from from the publisher or an associated or or so or or associated a vendor you can actually get tutoring in those subjects so i mean so so we're talking about talking about for the sciences and the higher and the higher math so back then would it have been possible for me i'm pretty sure it would have been but mm -hmm. i'd say i did say definitely to today it's you know to, to today parents you can still you can still keep your kids you know at you know at home you know at you know at home and still be connected with other people and and still and still have like just a far above average education really one that's i really really think the key thing is what i missed about being homeschooled when i went to the private school is well three things in three things in general one i realized wow it takes under the system it takes way more time because <laughs> mm -hmm. normally we were done with everything i'm talking about if I were just to start from classes and homework, I'd be done by two or three, and that was like, and, and that was, and that would be for secondary. So by the time people are getting out of school, I'm already done with everything. Of course, I'd spread it out because I, because that's thing I had, to, I had other things to do slash time to do it. But that's another thing too is time, is the greater degree of flexibility with me you know, with my hours. But I'd say the top all off is just the warmth and the intimacy of just being at home and even with that those small circles who you're learning learning and growing alongside with as well because it's because it's because i had valuable friendships and relationships at my private school but i definitely say there's it's a major switch it's not as close as with my homeschool umbrella so so that's so that's my two cents on that and to conclude this interview so Really, so what are the th three things, the three takeaways you really want people, you know, particularly homeschool parents, before we before we close? So I wrote down three important reasons that um, I believe that it's vital for a parent to homeschool their children. Um, your children will receive a God honoring education built on the foundation of God's word, which is so important now. The children need God. We live in a godless society and the children are lost and they're looking for truth. And as parents, in Psalm 127, three says, as parents, it's important to remember that children are a heritage from the Lord and we are entrusted to be good stewards of whatever the Lord has blessed us with. So God commands us to teach our children his commands. So we need to remember that our children should always come first and not our jobs and our careers and our hobbies because we have to stand before the Lord one day and get an account. So we need to remember that, that the Lord, Lord loves children. And so we need to love our children by teaching him his word and his ways. And so they can be obedient when they grow up and they won't fall away. So the second reason is as children develop, their worldview is constantly being shaped by what they are exposed to. So if your child is constantly exposed to worldly views based on man's word and not God's word, then his will then this will affect his how they view the word. They will start believing they came from an ape. They are more than two genders. This leads to complete disobedience to God's word. So I need to remember that the wor their worldview is constantly being shaped by what they are exposed to. So if they go to a, to a public school, they're going to pick up all these weird and worldly ideas from, from their classmates, from their teachers. And, and then they come home and they hear you talk about God and the Bible. And then they're going to have, there's going to be a lot of spirit, spiritual warfare. Well, you have to be ready for this. And so I think it's important that, if you keep your child at home, you're able to have that control, to not control them, but to be able to control that part of their lives 
and to help them to understand the truth that God loves them and God is true. And the third reason is by taking charge of their education, we can help provide the structure necessary for our children to live in this world, but not to be conformed to it. Romans 12, 2. Well, thank you very much for those edifying words and may this be encouragement to parents as well as students, particularly those who are older. That you may just, uh, and wherever you're at, whether you haven't started homeschooling or you, or you started recently or you're some years in or you're a veteran, I just really hope that this was uplifting to your soul, to you, to your mind your, and your spirit just to press on in, in Jesus Christ. All right. No, can I say a few more words? Yes, by all means. Yes, I also wanted to uh, reiterate that, um, that to remind you that it's not your ability. It's not you. You know, like I, I kept thinking that I was not able, that I, I didn't have the college education, that I didn't have the credentials, that who am I? You know, I, I don't know very much. But if you are willing, if you are willing, because the Lord knows your heart, if you're willing to do this, to, to sacrifice your job and your time for your children, the Lord will bless you. He will lead you. He will show you. He will guide you. He will provide for you financially. The Lord showed, showed himself so many, in so many ways to us when, while we were homeschooling. I quit my job for nine years to homeschool my children. And I thought, well, we're going to go broke. We're going to lose a house. We're, we're going to lack this and that and the other. But no, we had more. We had more than we had when I worked at the post office. And I was really surprised and I was really thrilled. And, I, and the Lord had really revealed himself to us. And, and then I began to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust in him. Trust in him. And it's such a sound way to end the first episode of His Home Academy podcast. This is Christian M.C. Fulmer and his mother, Lucia Fulmer, signing out.